If you want to make chiptune but really don't want to deal with downloading all the software to get into it, this video is for you. Busca QAL lets you make music for free online, and you can even download the program if you prefer. The point is, this is all you need to make chiptune or retro music. For example, this is what you can make with it. Hey everyone, Jake from Transverse Audio here. This is a really basic and straightforward music creator that you can learn how to use quickly, and it's great if you are a solo game developer making a pixel art style game, or are just interested in making some low bit or retro music. Now before I get into it, the link is in the description below. Starting from the site, you'll see the option to either use it in your browser or download it onto your computer, which can be done for Windows, Mac, and Linux. For the simplicity of this video, I'll just go ahead and use the browser version. If you're using Chrome, you'll need to enable Flash by clicking on the lock to the left of the URL and changing it to Allow, which can also be done under Site Settings. When the program launches, the first thing you'll be up against is the MIDI editor, often called the Piano Roll, and the option menus on the top. Under File, you can learn more about the creators, the program, and Play, Pause, or Stop the Playback. You can also use the spacebar to play and stop. Next to that, you have control over how many bars and beats each pattern has. Below that, there is the BPM, or beats per minute, and that determines how many beats are played over one minute, essentially how fast it will play the song you make. Switching over to the Arrangement tab, you can create patterns using the button here. These are just individual patterns of musical notes that you may write known as MIDI. I'll get to writing music when I go over the Instrument tab. To add a pattern to the playlist, drag and drop the pattern from the list to the right, or from a pattern in the playlist to copy it. If you wanted to duplicate it to make slight variations, just middle click on the pattern in the playlist. And you can right click to remove a pattern from the playlist as well. To delete one completely, drag it from the list on the right to the bottom right corner. Scroll to zoom in and out of the playlist, and use the buttons on the side to navigate through the entire song or arrangement. On the bottom of this, there is the timeline where you're able to set loop points by either clicking to set a one column loop or click and drag to loop through multiple columns. Oh, and you can double click to play the rest of the song from that point on. If you want to delete all of the patterns in a single column, just right click on the timeline. And if you middle click there, it will insert an empty column. Okay, now we can add instruments for each pattern to use. You can have up to 16 different instruments per project, and you can change the instrument group and select the individual instrument in its submenus. All of these are pretty retro in nature, and this actually has a decent selection of drums, not to mention how many different sounding instruments there are. Finally, you can control the volume of the instrument and set the position of the low-pass filter, which is just a band on an EQ in the shape of this that reduces the volume of specific frequencies to the right of the curve. There. I'll go over the Advanced tab at the end, but first let's take a look at the MIDI editor. Here you can write out your musical score, such as a melody, bass line, or chords. Simply left-click to place a note, right-click to delete, and scroll to change the length of the note. To the far right, you can scroll to higher or lower pitches to place notes. Two quick tips, you can actually hear what the instrument sounds like on each note by pressing the note label to the left. This is based on the note length too. The second one is you can tell if you have notes out of sight in the pattern by seeing a line on the top or bottom, depending on the position and length of the note. Now on the bottom there are a few options and starting from the right you can select the key, which is simply the note a scale starts from. Next to that is the Scale Select, which will only display the notes in that scale, based on the key you've selected. 
I'll link to a resource below if you want to learn more about scales and keys. But for now, a scale is just a group of notes that act as a guideline for what notes you should use in your song. This keeps everything sounding good. Beside that, you can transpose or change the pitch of the entire pattern. The next option to the far left will let you select the instrument that is used for the pattern you currently have open. Okay, the last thing I want to go over is the Advanced tab. Here you'll be able to set the sound buffer size, which can be changed to fix some problems in your exported audio, swing, which makes an offset in the beat, and can make your song sound like this. And you can add a single effect to the entire track. Kinda sucks how it's only one and is applied to everything, but it is better than nothing. Just select the effect you want to use, and slide the amount anywhere from off to 100%. With that, I hope you can make some really cool chiptune or retro music for video games or just a standalone music. Subscribe and press the bell if you like this kind of stuff and want to see more. As always, thanks for watching.